Hi guys, it's Timmy and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in today's video I'm going to share with you some new blooms. Um, I have an orchid that actually was in spike when I left for my holidays in China and actually waited for me to come back to open. So I'm really, really happy about that. And um, I'm going to take you nearer to the plant and make a spotlight video about it. And yeah, so let's do it. All right, so we're in front of my orchid wall and we're right on the orchid I want to show you today. So this is Catacetum saccatum. Uh, saccatum means uh, sac shaped and I guess this is because there is like sort of a pouch in the lip. I don't want to manipulate it too much because people who grow Catacetum they know why but yeah you see there is like uh, like there is some sort of recipient there. So, uh, yeah, Sakatum. Uh, little history of this orchid. I got it last year, so it's my first year growing them. And I got this one as Catacetum uh, tenobrosum. And actually, it was mislabeled. And turn out, turns out I actually have two of them. Because the one right next to it here is in spike. And one of the buds is opening there. And you, you can see it's actually the same flower. So yeah, I have two. Maybe if one day I get some uh, female flowers, I will be able to do some cross-pollination, but we'll see about that. Uh, so this orchid comes from Guyana, Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, and Brazil in tropical areas uh, at elevation from 200 to 1,700 meters. Uh, which means that it's quite tolerant in its temperature from hot to, uh, well, online you can find cool growing, but maybe I wouldn't go in the cool zone, but I mean, intermediate is fine. Like I have intermediate here, so it's fine for it. Um, there in nature, it experienced like uh, really wet and hot summers and a bit cooler, like warm and uh, wet winters and actually uh, this is really important to know when you grow catacetini because uh, that trait is very special for them they have a real dormancy after flowering so um, the temperature like to call to, to talk a little bit about the culture uh, cultural information temperature wise as i said they are quite tolerant uh, in the intermediate, some of the catacetini they really need hot conditions, but this one is not like that. So uh, actually, you can grow them in a uh, uh, intermediate environment. Uh, Light-wise, they're like almost full sun. Like, well, I wouldn't put them right under direct sunlight because there is always the risk of burning them. But uh, like the highest light you can give them, are like even more than Cattleya light. I would do like that because there is a rest period and a non-rest period. So during the growing period it likes as much heat as you can give it, as much light as you can give it. And in the rest period it can go a little bit cooler of course and uh, light wise actually uh, there is some theory that if you put them under high light you get male flowers and if you put them under uh, lower light in the shade, you get female flowers because this is a trend of these orchids. They have male and female flowers, which actually look uh, usually quite different. Sometimes it's even hard to say that they're the same species. Well, maybe I will experiment with those two when they go dormant. I will put one in high light and one under low light and see uh, if there is any difference in the flowering. Um, there is also something uh, about fertilizing. Of course, they like a lot of feed in summer when they're growing because they have to get a really plump, really uh, fat pseudobulb to be able to uh, go into dormancy without any problem. So uh, what I do is in this year, I'll put some bark in the mix, but what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to put uh, sphagnum moss in the pots, packed in really, really well, and I will put some slow re release fertilizer with that. Uh, the reason is because I, when I water, I like to spray everything in one go and I don't want to be messing about with the waters, different types of water, diff different types of uh, nutrients for different types of orchids, that's too much. So what I do with the uh, like 
and if the orchids that needs a bit more feed, I'm going to put a uh, slow release fertilizer directly in the sphagnum moss. And uh, I've repotted a few already that went dormant and I did that. So uh, we'll see next year how it goes. But I know that other people are doing the same and they have really good results. So uh, it should be fine. Um, of course, during dormancy, you don't water out at all and you don't feed. Uh, uh, that's There is a lot of sayings that from when to when you don't water them. Actually, I I would say you have to look at your plants. If it wants to grow, just keep on doing what you're doing. If it goes dormant, leaves, lose all the leaves and there is no new growth coming on, just stop watering. And for that one, I think you can stop watering completely. Unless, maybe, like if the pseudobulbs they're really getting really, really shriveled, uh, then I guess you can give it a drop of water. There is a theory that uh, when they're coming into growth, that if you water them too early, the roots stop growing. Um, I've experienced that with some of them, with other ones I didn't experience that at all. So uh, actually I'm basing my watering on the pseudobulbs. As long as uh, the pseudobulbs are really plump and the new growth is not uh, quite developed, I just don't water them. So that's high it. Um, this is a thing about it, so let's go a bit near the flower. So you can see there is the lip with a lot of pretty things there, with the little pouch there. And you have the two sepals there. And actually, there are the one sepal with the two petals that are, I know, I don't know if they're fused, but actually they don't separate. So if you can see here in the bud, it's great I have a bud to show you. You see the other ones are the sepals and the one inside are the petals. And this petal actually, when it opens, it will actually curl back. You can see here, they're curling back and they still, they stay like uh, together with the sepal. So it gives this flower a really, really uh, like strange look. I mean, it's a weird one. I, I know it's a weird one, but it's a really, really beautiful, weird one. Um, there are many different varieties of that orchid with different uh, colors and a the shape of the lip can uh, vary a little bit. There is also another species of Catacidium, which is thought uh, to be also a variety of that one. And uh, the only difference is that the lip doesn't curl back. Uh, so for now, I think it's in curvum, Catacetum in curvum. So some people consider it as the same species. Other people think it's too different to be the same species. So yeah, this is special. And uh, now something I already told you that there is a difference between the male and female flower, which is a, a peculiar thing about this orchid because orchids usually don't have male and female flowers, but uh, these types of orchids they do. And also the pollination mechanism on those orchids is really, really famous and really, really special. So there is, you can see inside, I will take a slow motion video and put it at the end of this video or right now or I'm speaking, I don't know. But you can see here inside the flowers, there are two little like hair and those are actually trigger, uh, triggers. And when the pollinating insects go, comes here and lands on the lid and touch it, you know that part here, you see it, it will like shoot out like eject this part and there is a type of glue on it and it will stick itself on the back of the pollinating insects and there is a little cap like a little hat on the pollinia and this hat will fall off after a while so that when the uh the the, the insect visits another female flower the pollinia is exposed and can fit it's like a key fitting into a lock and stays there and then pollination occurred. So maybe like take some more detailed videos of the flower. Uh, 
really 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 nice one and this one here the spike so all right all right so this was my video on my catecetum saccatum i hope you liked it i hope you liked the slow motion of the pollination i thought it was really cool uh, for me it was not that uh, high quality image my phone doesn't have that function but yeah i think it was clear enough so we see how it happens and uh, now the flower that lost its pollen will will quite fast uh, the other ones should last a little longer they've lasted for already five days and i guess about um yeah usually this maximum two weeks so we will see about that one but uh, anyway thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time bye